why silver fell to the 18s. I'm going to give you two answers for this. The first answer is going to cause you to roll your eyes and groan. Like, not groan as in growing tall groan, as in groan as in uh. Okay, the reason why silver fell to the 18s was because of supply and demand. Okay, you can finish groaning now. So here's my analysis. If you notice on these last few big drops, they happened overnight, right? So, you know, the stuff was down some, you know, a little bit, and then you wake up and bam, it's down over a buck or there's a huge overnight move. We've had several huge overnight moves. Why are these moves overnight? Well, I remember maybe four years ago or so, maybe three, four, I don't know the exact time frame, there were um, several large overnight moves up. Remember there's analysis done in places like Zero Head showing that um, the price movement of silver, a huge part of it could be attributed to the overnight movement. So there were people overseas who were buying a lot of that stuff. So you get up in the morning and say, whoa, there's an overnight spike, right? Well, now we're seeing overnight falling prices. What that tells me is that a lot of those same people who bought um, overnight while we were sleeping have sold off overnight as we were sleeping as well. Um, because I don't think a lot of silver people have suddenly over the last few years had a huge migration between nations. So that's what that's telling me based upon the supply and demand thing. Now, there are still some who are saying that it's not supply and demand and, and, and so forth, but um, I suggest you go to places like, you know, Atmex and other places and, and see what is the, what are the premiums on these metals and what are they buying back the prices for and perhaps go to eBay. eBay typically has higher premiums than most places, but look at the, the premiums. Where are the premiums going of the physical? And that tells you something right there. So when will silver really bottom? When will the, when will the really be a bottom? My sentiment guess is when the cult element of silver is at its minimal, right? There will always be a cult element in silver due to its um, historical, religious, political, ideological, the nature of money. Money is those natures. So there will always be um, a, quote, cult element to any investment that is that has the nature of money in it, right? Like, you know, bitcoins. I shouldn't say the B word because not everybody likes those things, but you know what I'm saying, right? So that can th that will never go to zero, right? The, the, the cult element of any monetary investment will never go to zero. But you can't see a minimization of the cult element, and you can see former cult members turning on their cult leaders. That's what I'm looking at here. So here's my final anecdote. Of course, it goes back to chess. I have a lot of chess anecdotes here, right? You guys can fall asleep now. I don't know. But anyhow, this one place I play, there's a player who shows up. This player who show, shows up talks as though he's a strong player. He's, he's got books, and he's always referencing books about previous world champions, about openings. He uses all these chess terminology and lingo, right? He uses all these... He's trying to sound like a master. And whenever a new person comes to the club, he's always trying to rope them in, saying, hey, come play with me. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm just a great player, right? Well, he's the worst player in the club by far. He's atrocious at the game, especially considering what he has read. Why is he atrocious? Because he's fooling himself and he won't listen and he won't observe. He wants to think he's a strong player and that in itself just overwhelms his ego and he, he, he's a, the biggest fool in the club and I kind of feel sorry for the guy but then I stop feeling sorry for the guy. For example, he, want, he, he, he was playing someone and he starts t talking big about openings, right? So the guy just drops a pawn in the opening, right? Boom, he loses a pawn for absolutely nothing. And this is what the guy says, oh yeah, these opening gambits are really dangerous here. Yeah, when, when I sacrifice a pawn, you got to watch out. So I said, hey, listen, you're down a pawn. What is your compensation for that pawn? When people sacrifice material in chess, they get something for it. 
whether it's an attack on the king, whether it's a lead in development, whether it's creating a weakness on your opponent's side, right? What is your compensation? He's like, oh, well, in these positions, it's, it's well known that, I said, no, no, you give me something specific. The guy's like, oh, well, you know, he's like, he's like, he starts giving these vague things and he, he says nothing that relates to the game at hand. He's like, oh, yeah, I see I've got some space here and i got some open lines. I'm like, well, let's count the open lines. How many of your pieces are active? And how many of your opponent's pieces are active? Oh, my gosh. Your opponent has more active pieces than you, and you're down a pawn. Where's your compensation? How about space? Wait. Your opponent has as much space as you. Where's your space? Where's the attack on the king? You have no attack on your opponent's king. So you have no development. You have no space. Your opponent has no weaknesses. Your opponent's king is safe. And you have nothing for it. How can you say you get gamuted upon? And the guy would like kind of turn red and change the subject, and he would he would keep to it, giving more quotes about something else. He's like, "Well, we'll see who's right when this game turns out." He's like, "You know, the game is too early. You can't you can't say something like that." I'm like, "Oh yes, I can. I'm a 2100 rated chess player now, right? I'm almost 2100 rated chess player, right? My rating has gone up recently, right? I'm I'm." 100 points for master, guy. Listen, I'm the strongest player in this club. The reason why I'm this strong isn't because I, 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 I you sell, say, say anecdotes that mean nothing, right? And the guys are, rah, rah. and the other players just love this because everybody in the club, they've wanted to say this, but they've held back or because it's, it's actually pointless because next week the guy shows up and he hasn't learned. So someone like that, right? Also, that guy also invests in precious metals, which I'm, I really bothers me, right? But this is the kind of guy where every week he has, he has the latest, Thing from, I don't know, the Camelot Project. He, he's got the latest conspiracy that's disprovable, right? Because there are conspiracies that are true, right? And there, there are some that have, that, that, that could be true. But this guy, well, anything that comes up on the internet, he repeats anything he will repeat without looking into it. And even though you can disprove it time and time again, every week, he comes up with the same thing, okay? Now, that is the guy that will always be in the silver market, that will never learn and that will always have a cult element. So the real thing to look at is, um, when will the regular people in silver, right? Well, I don't know, I'm, st I'm, star I'm starting to get a change, but the point is, is that there will never be a removal of the cult element in any investment that involves, that has, has an ideology or has a historical basis such as silver. So thanks for watching and goodbye.